Hello. I want to talk about living without attachments. And when I'm talking about attachments, I mean attaching ourselves to things like I like, I don't like, especially when we're looking at training with our dogs or just living with our dogs in general. When we're attaching ourselves to things like I like this, I don't like that, this is good, this is bad, this is right, this is wrong, we get attached to that and we identify with that. And then what that does, it keeps us in our thinking mind, it takes us out of the present moment, and we actually don't get a true picture of what's really happening right in front of us, right before our eyes. Now when we, when we look at training, and, and I've seen a lot of videos online, and I see the same things where the person that calls themselves the trainer is saying, this is how I like to train and this is how I like to teach a dog to do this or teach our dog not to do this. And when we say we like this method or this way, then what we're doing is we're limiting ourselves, limiting our thinking, and we're putting boundaries around our responses and around the way um, that we might actually be able to see insights. And once again, when I, when I talk about a training situation, you might have somebody that is saying to you, do this in five easy steps, but what if you can't get past step number two? And so if you're going by a recipe or how somebody likes to do something, then you're actually limiting yourself to that specific method. And that often doesn't allow for anything outside of that method. And therefore, we take our eyes off the process and we miss insights that the process has to offer us. Now, one thing that is really interesting when we're talking about training, especially when we think about how we've ge genetically man manipulated dogs over the past 10,500 years, and we still continue to do, the, to do this, but not only are we genetically manipulating them to look a certain way, to have a certain temperament, now we actually have to limit our dogs even further by training them in a specific way. And I see lots of other videos online that show lots of groups of dogs and they're robotically um, performing requests with their humans um, and there's dogs walking past on, on loose, leash, loose leash walking, there's other dogs sitting. But the thing is, it's just... It's really taking the idea of training um, or the idea of helping your dog to live in harmony with you as a human living with another species. Because very often we're looking at training from the human's perspective, what they see as something that's positive from their point of view. And so when you remove your attachments to things like saying, I like doing this or I don't like that, then what you're doing is you're, when you drop those attachments, you step into the present moment. You're freeing your mind of thought, you're freeing your mind of judgments and all of those expressions of identification. And you're looking at training from your dog's perspective. And well, why is that so important? Well, it's so important because our dogs are communicating to us all the time, every second that we're with them. And if we don't understand what they're communicating to us, then how are we ever going to help our dogs become successful in a training situation or in any real world given situation? And so this really simple idea, if you like, of just training consciously taking conscious action, being in the present moment, looking at training from your dog's point of view, not saying, I don't like it when my dog does this, so I need to get my dog to do this, or even just robotic, robotically asking your dog to sit, stay, um, or uh, drop on their mat, or settle on their mat, even just robotically asking them to do that without really providing a pleasant experience for our dog with respect to what they actually get out of it as a consequence. Now, of course, in a training session, you'll be using high value rewards for your dog, and that, that's, that's a given. 
But it's not just about robotically asking your dog to do something because we're not taking our dog's emotional state into perspective, into account as well. And our dog's behaviour and their emotional state are intimately and inherently intertwined. And so if we say, I don't like it when my dog does this, yet our dog is doing that because their emotional state is reflecting that they are feeling anxious or stress or conflict or anxiety in a situation, well then that's really not only unhelpful for you, but it's shortchanging your dog because you haven't let go of your attachments and your perspective and taken time to actually see what is happening in that present moment where your dog is performing a behaviour, which whatever type of behaviour that might be, barking, lunging, growling at another dog walking past, not listening to you, all of those types of behaviours, when you're consciously training or you're consciously involved and engaged, paying attention to the present moment, then you're not judging your dog, you're not blaming your dog, you're not feeling resentment towards your dog when your dog isn't getting it um, because you're not, you're not feeling those things because you're actually looking at the situation in entirety, in totality, and you're seeing the true reality of what's happening. And your dog's behaviour is nothing more than a behaviour. That's all it is. It's simply a behaviour. And so when we also let go of our attachments to saying, I like and I don't like this, or this is good, this is bad, this is right, this is wrong, this is the way I like to do things, then when we drop all of those attachments, we actually reconnect ourselves, not just with the present moment and the reality of the situation, but we reconnect ourselves with our dogs. And that means that we have, have a sense of joy and warmth and that leads us to empathy and compassion. And if you want to sum up how um, one should should's not the greatest word, um, the, most, the most appropriate way to train is to train consciously because then we're taking action that is based on the true reality of a situation and what our dog's emotional state is reflecting back to us as a result of the body language that they're demonstrating to us in a situation. So it's really, it's really valuable and really important that we see not just training but just living in real world situations with our companion animals, seeing things as they truly are, not how we're identifying with a particular moment. Um, and when we're ident identifying with a particular moment, that usually means that our emotional state is interfacing, if you like, with our conditioned mindset. And it's our conditioned mindset, I don't like this, I like that, that's good, that's bad, that's right, that's wrong, that's cruel, this is inappropriate, this is no good, that's stupid, that dog's aggressive, that dog's menacing, that dog should be restricted, that dog should be confined, that dog's so noisy, it's barking all the time. So you can see all of these labels come from nowhere and they, they are incessant, especially when we have attachments to our conditioned mindset, which is based around what we think whether that may be right or wrong or whether that may be just, correct or sound or true. So if we think about just dropping our attachments, dropping our judgments, dropping the labels, then we see the true reality of the situation, which means we're going to take conscious action based upon all of the information that we are receiving from our environment, 
but it also means that our perception of what we're seeing is based on fact, not fiction, and not our imagination and not the labels that we're putting on a particular situation. We'll talk again soon.